On behalf of the Board of Directors of the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, it gives me great pleasure to present this year's Cecil B. DeMille Award to Jack Nicholson. <laughs> Thank you and um, good morning. Uh, you know, and thank you, Warren, but you know, I, I thought you had a lot more love for me than that. <laughs> you know? Thanks to the Hollywood Foreign uh, Press for uh, honoring me with the Cecil B. DeMille uh, Lifetime Achievement Award. As my friend Jim Lampley said, the fact that you've had a life is an achievement, Jack. <laughs> Thank you, Pro. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I feel like um, that young rancher that I saw on the TV commercial with his boots up sitting on the ground, and he says, you know, if you can find some work that you love, uh, you pretty much have a life. And I know all that the Hollywood Foreign Press's guests and nominees tonight share with me, our awareness of uh, the good fortune that we have to do what we do. And I um, want to congratulate the nominees, of course. I, sorry, it's a long speech, so I have to look at it every once in a while. Um, what I like about this particular award is that it doesn't come from our peer groups. <laughs> You know, uh, Hollywood Foreign Press is kind of a very loose group of guys and gals, you know? I mean, it's like, you, you almost feel like you could go out and have fun with them. Probably because they don't have as much to lose as we do. You know, uh, what? Good. Thank you, bro. I, uh... You know, I actually remember the first day that I went to work in the movie business. I wrote it down on my desk. The 5th of May, the 5th month, 1955. Five was my lucky number. And the number of my uh, boyhood idol, Joe DiMaggio. And I'm, I'm very glad, Joe, uh, that your streak is still alive. I've been invited, uh, I've come to the Golden Globes forever, before I was invited, before, <laughs> before it was on television, and you know, but before television it was wild. I saw Joan Crawford, you know, the, the legend, the idol of my own mothers and sisters in World War II for chic and a strong woman, probably already the chairman of the CEO of Pepsi-Cola stand up here and go, in my day, we had them. <laughs> I, I saw Rita Hayworth come sauntering down to center stage to some stripper music, you know, turn her back, flip the dress back over her back, I'll tell you, what a sight, I almost wept. <laughs> And over there, her ex-husband and stage partner and presenter for the night, Glenn Ford, looked out at us all and said, if you only knew how many times I've been through this. <laughs> I like fun. What can I say? You know, <clears throat> I've worked with, I got this written down, 50 directors, Six, 50, 60 directors, 3,000 actors, over 100 and 150 producers and executive producers. That means 600 assistant directors, 1,000 secretaries or so, 1,200 technicians and crew and, and, and innumerable extras. And Joy Zapata, a woman who has every right to expect that because of her life's work, it should be getting easier, and it only gets more difficult. 
She's my makeup woman and hair stylist. You know what I mean? God, he's good looking. I hate him. <clears throat> A million thank yous wouldn't cover all that I really do appreciate about all those people that I've collaborated with um, on my movies. And for the help, the teaching, the friendships, the love, the fury over creative discussions even, especially the fury on these fragile things that we do that we call uh, movies. Tens of thousands of people, tens of thousands of people, and through this only one agent who has stayed with me. <laughs> guided me, tolerated my tantrums, my operatic, you know, behavior and so forth. <laughs> Never lost his calm. His name escapes me. <laughs> Where are you, Sandy? Sandy Bressler, my pal, and, and, and uh, comrade in arms. I love you, Bress. I know he'd want me to mention Bobby Colbert and my lawyer, Abe Summer. And I would like to just read, uh, say a lot of names, Roger Corman, Monty Hellman, the BBS guys, Bert Schneider, Bob Rafelson, Steve Blauner, Hopper, Fonda, Mike Nichols, Harry Giddes, Hal Ashby, Bobby Evans, The Pro, Midge Sturges, and Jojo Caruso. Oh, they're all people who just believed on, in me on instinct when my work is more like those first few clips of mine. <laughs> that you saw, and maybe there was a lot of evidence against me. Um, for instance, on my first job, while my mother and sister were hiding in the dark and kind of watching me, you know, hoping I was going to be in the movie business, I turned around and imagined I saw my director making fun of my newly acquired psychological gesture from Michael Chekhov. I mean, this is, you want to talk about embarrassment and humiliation. That was nothing compared to the previews, I'll tell you that, too. I mean, it's got nothing. C.B. DeMille Lifetime Achievement Award. These awards always kind of put the fear of the shroud into me somehow. <laughs> but, you know, about the future and work, uh, all I can say is, ready any time you are, CB. <laughs> I thank you very much. I really appreciate it. <laughs>